Hey guys, it's me Noah here with the CP Gamers. This time I'm bringing you the seventh update to my building Endor series of this large Lego mock that I'm making right here. Uh, this one's going to be a little bit different. Obviously, there wasn't a time lapse in the beginning of this one like I like to do with all my other videos. Um, I'll probably include it at the end. Uh, but the reason for that is because we have a lot to talk about and I want to get into it right now. So, uh, some of you guys saw that uh, these pillars have been completed and that was done after my episode 6, but I didn't really make a proper update on it because I made another video about the news that Game of Thrones writers will be making the next Star Wars trilogy. Uh, so I just had to make that video as quick as I could and that's why I didn't really get time to explain these pillars and what I'm doing at the top, so I'll do that right now. Obviously, since these are not the right color, they're not the same color as these pillars, these are just kind of a test for me. Um, but what they are is they're going to be the kind of support chassis underneath the landing pad. So, obviously this is different than what you guys can see in the movie. In the movie they go straight up and they're not out like this. Uh, I'll have a picture of the movie right now. But this is more modeled after the video games and since most people design their landing pads after the movies, I figured I would do it a little bit differently because it still looks cool after the video games. In the video games they come out like this a lot quicker and then there's a kind of a, uh, a bigger cylinder up here that's flat. So that's what I'm going to try and be designing at the end of this video in the time lapse. It's going to be a lot of trial and error and I don't even know if I'm going to finish it in time. So just uh, be aware of that and if you want to see it, just stay around to the end of this video. But I will show you what I've done so far with these and how I've been planning it out. So I have a lot of these dark bluish gray pieces. I'm not even sure what they're called, but this is what they are. Um, I'm using four of them. I might have to cut that down to three. But essentially it sticks out just like this. Um, and then we're going to have obviously the cylinder at the top. And I'm going to fill these parts in, the gaps, with simply these regular bricks right here. Which are the uh, sloped pieces that go out three studs, as you can see. So I need to buy some of those in light gray if I decide to go through with this strategy. I'm not exactly sure yet because I don't know what it's going to look like when I have the final part built. Also down here, I'm going to try and get some tiles so that when I connect them, you can't see these, uh, if I get a good angle, you can see that there's a gap there between the studs, obviously, so if I have tiles, that'll go away. Obviously, this won't be a, you know, an arch like that. It'll be a full brick, and these will be different color as well, but that's what I'm going to plan on doing for that. Um, and then they're connected just like this. It's pretty simple. This is the same strategy I did when I was building my very first mock on Megiddo for those large Magician spires. So I have left a little pole in this video in the top right corner if you're watching on a computer. It's that little eye circular button. You can click on that and let me know if you guys like the idea of me modeling the upper support structure out of, or modeling it based on the video game and not the movie. Um, I know a lot of people have done Endor, so it's always good to try something different. I don't want to copy other people, so I'm going to base it on the video game for this part. And I kind of like that idea, but if you guys are completely against it, I will listen to you. So definitely tell me what your opinion is over there. And um, towards the end of this video, you guys can get a better view of what this is going to look like, obviously, because I'll try and be getting some of the cylinder done on the top, like I said before. The only real issue with this is that we kind of have a difference in, a difference in sloping. Um, so what I mean by that is this piece, as you can see, kind of juts out right like that and it's convex. By What I mean by that is if I take this off, kind of demonstrate, um, in the actual game, so like this would be concave and then this is convex. So this is what we technically have. It's a lot less, um, a lot less of a obvious change because these are much smaller, but an exaggerated case would be like this. Ideally, we would have it be like this with the convex, but I don't think that's possible with the pieces that I have, um, and we're going to have to settle with this kind of strategy when I flip this piece over. You guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. From the side, it's easier to see that the piece is sticking out like this rather than going like this. It's not really a big deal because it's so, so gradual with these, but um, it's just a little bit not accurate to the game or the movie, so I thought I would let you guys know and maybe help you influence your decision. So another thing I've done since the last video 
So I've added some more smaller parts to the top of these trees. I don't know if this is exactly going to be the final uh, version of what I have. But essentially it's just connected like everything else is, really simple. Um, we have some tiles up there and some studs that connect onto the tree and then uh, let's see if I can break this apart. Oh no, I guess I connected them with these plates, but essentially underneath each one of those tree segments is something of this size, which connects plates to the side of, um, of the tree. It's the exact same strategy as I had, let me see if I can get this back on, it's the exact same strategy as I had for the main bark platforms, just like this, with uh, you know snot bricks on the side, but it's smaller since these are only two in width, and hopefully it's getting the good look that I want of the gradual change in the tree width. I'm not exactly sure if I like how it looks, and I don't know if it's going to be able to hold up a branch yet, but we will see in the coming episodes. So let me know what you guys think about this also, uh, if, if you like how it looks, if it's too much of a drastic change right here. I do want it to be as gradual as possible, but um, this is just the first iteration, I guess, so that's what that looks like. And then another thing we have for this video, it's probably the last update I guess to this segment, is that I have moved this backwards, uh, this bunker entrance, because it was it was originally two studs up right where we have this dark bluish gray plate, that's where it was in the last segment, and I just thought that that was a little bit too close to this pillar wall, so like, if you are a minifigure coming out, say this minifigure is about six feet tall, we're talking, it was exactly six feet from the door to a big wall in his face, so that didn't really feel too realistic. I'm still not even sure if this is enough of a space between the two, but it's, it's impossible for me to move that back any farther without yanking up this entire rock behind it and everything that I've done so far, so I'm going to leave it like that. I don't think it looks so bad, uh, but, but that's how that looks. I think it looks a little bit better now. I still have to add the door piece, which is going to be similar to that one, but I don't have any more dishes. Over here, I'm pretty happy with how this came out. The mountain over here is actually removable at the top so you can see the interior of the base. Um, this is obviously going to be the first of many removable roof pieces that I'm going to be doing, but I've never done it before and I really like how it looks. You can't even tell at all that it's two separate pieces, uh, but when I yank it off, and I'll show you in a second, when I yank it off, you'll see that it is actually removable and it looks pretty good underneath. So here's that section that comes off. Put it over here. Okay, that's gonna fall. Um, but I'll put it over there, and then you can see inside we have the stairs done, but I don't have enough tiles to finish this section over here. And I'm still not really sure what I, I'm gonna do with the detailing on the walls there. Um, in the games, it has some dark tan, so I thought that looked pretty cool. So I'm gonna try and do something with the dark tan, but so far, no definitive plans. So anyway guys, thank you for watching and please be sure to subscribe and share the video with your friends if you're interested in seeing more. And now we're going to cut to the trial and error slash time lapse or whatever of me trying to finish the first prototype of these, uh, these little chassis design for my landing pad. So I'll cut to that and we'll see what we end up with at the end of this episode.